It is true, Bethesda started another band wave, but we are yet to see a proper fix, which may or may not be live right now. Well, the time will tell. Now, lunchboxes are broken and there are tons of new power armor bugs. It's news time. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Are you ready for another round of Patch 28 news? Well, a new band wave is really ongoing, but this action raises a lot of questions, especially because the exploits that led to such bands were still live until a few hours ago. Uh, meanwhile, I discovered that lunch boxes are not working properly and I have been testing power armor just to find out that there are lots of new and recurring bugs including some related to fusion cores. There's like a list of issues when it comes to this item, actually. Anyway, Minerva is live again, but watch out, her inventory information can be deceiving, as you are about to find out. All right then, let's jump right into the details. Let's do this. Early last week, there were some rumors that Bethesda started banning cheaters, but I couldn't find much proof, so I decided not to give it any coverage. It wasn't until Friday, July 23rd, that things became kinda official with dozens of players claiming they have been banned. The weekend went by, and right now social media is filled with such posts. So the conclusion is simple, yes, Bethesda is banning players who have been abusing the ongoing duplication glitches and probably some other major exploits as well, like the one where you can craft legendaries with no cost or another where you can store limited power armor pieces in one single frame. However, what shocked me the most about this new ban wave is the fact that some players claim they got suspended for only 72 hours. I mean, what is three days, really? That's the exact punishment Bethesda decided to give me when my husband threw a few curses at the griefer who had been chasing me over a year. So if you follow Bethesda's logic here, massive duping is as offensive as stepping up to someone harassing and griefing you repeatedly for a very long time. Yeah, defending yourself seems to be as bad as mass cheating for weeks floating the market with duplicated items, crashing servers, and disrupting the normal gameplay of thousands of players. It's surreal, it makes absolutely no sense, especially if you consider the fact that no new or proper hotfix has been released. It has been almost three weeks, and last I checked, the servers are still crashing left, right, and center. My question is, what good does a three-day ban do? Heck, even if it's a permanent ban, the cheaters can easily buy another account and come back to do the same, because the same exploits have been around, they haven't been fixed. Even the past ones are not properly fixed, as far as I know. Now, this is a quite complex topic, because from what I read, Bethesda created two groups for this ban wave, the three-day soft ban for those who cheated casually, if you can call it that, who didn't cheat at astronomic levels. And then there's the permanent ban group for those who have been doing nothing else but duplicating stuff, abusing exploits and crashing servers on a regular basis. In theory, this strategy makes a lot of sense. The punishment is proportional to the level of violation of their terms and conditions. But when you look at the entire context, all sense fades away. First, because banning cheaters without fixing the live exploits first, which allowed them to cheat, is useless. It's completely and plain useless. They can just buy more accounts, it's what they already do to avoid their main accounts to end up in a bad spot. Secondly, by issuing 3-day bans to duper accounts, even if it's just casual dupers, this is basically showing the entire community that the penalty for cheating is close to none. Which leads to the third point, Bethesda's action here works in reverse ways. Instead of punishing cheating and exploiting behaviors, they are encouraging people to cheat more and harder, because why not? The risk and penalty for doing it is so low, the temptation grows, and the behavior intensifies. It's only natural. In my view, they are promoting a vicious cycle here, but maybe it's just me. Anyway, there's another factor that might, or most likely is, influencing their banned decisions, 
money. There are a lot of cheaters who throw lots of money into 76 and Bethesda is no more no less than a corporate, right? Looking to make revenue. So if they permanently ban such great customers, they risk to lose them and all the profit they generate. And this is a risk that, in my view, no company wants to take. Therefore, why we are hearing about the sudden wave of three days suspensions. At the end of the day, it's all about the money. It's probably why we... At the end of the day, it's always about the money, isn't it? It's probably why they have been taking so long to solve this entire mess as well. But as this development team seems to lack resources, it's not new, so they are probably overwhelmed with defined work schedules that cannot accommodate such unexpected issues. It's not a matter of working hard here, it's a matter of being efficient with task distribution and priorities, and that always comes from the top. Well, to wrap this point up, last night the servers were still miserable, I had issues doing my dailies, the server delay was insane, the server not responding error kept popping up, and so on. Banning exploiters without a proper fix does not restore server stability, and I think we all know why. I mean, cheaters can and they do easily come back for more. There are 76 keys online for 5 6 euros, guys. I did a quick search just now and look at that. <sighs> I've been saying this for weeks and I will repeat it again. A functional hotfix is crucial to put an end to this situation at once and for all. I know we are in dire need for new content and game content, but if we can hardly play for more than 10 minutes at once without any sort of disruption, what's the point really? Think about it. Well, as I was working on this video, Bethesda announced the servers were going down shortly to perform maintenance and implement a new hotfix. They didn't provide any other details, but we all know what is it for, right? Now the question is, will it work? Will this hotfix be the one to end the chaos and restore peace to public servers? The previous two hotfixes couldn't do that, but hopefully this one will. As usual, it takes time to understand if a hotfix was efficient or not, so I cannot tell you yet if or what has been fixed. However, the maintenance took well over two hours, so whatever they did, it was probably not just a simple disable. I'm just assuming. Anyway, let's wait and see. Alright, next I want to inform you that lunchboxes are not working very well. I discovered this one last week by accident while using them myself. After that, I decided to test and it's true, lunchboxes are not working consistently. They often don't apply the respective experience boost. For example, if four lunchboxes are used, you might only get the effects for one, two or three. In this scene, someone used a lunchbox right next to me and a few seconds later I used another, but as shown in the effects tab, I only have 25% experience boost instead of 50. In another test, the same happened, me and another player used a lunchbox each and the buff only enabled 25%. According to my results, the problem is happening from other players when they use their own lunchboxes. When you use your own, the effects normally apply correctly, but when others do that near you, it doesn't always apply as intended. Anyway, I saw a few reports about this problem over Reddit, so I'm definitely not alone in this one. Well, make sure to always check your effects tab if you want to farm with the 100% experience buff, otherwise you might fall victim to the buggy system. Next, let's talk about Minerva. Last week she spawned at a crater and now she is currently at Fort Atlas for her third week of Emporium sales. But there's something you should know. Minerva sells mostly faction vendor and daily operation plans, but there are a few entries which were also part of past seasons, such as the Ammo Converter Machine, which was first introduced with Season 1, Legendary Run, and then it was later added to the Raiders vendor Amortimer. When it comes to such plans, which were first added to the game through the Atomic Shop slash scoreboard, things get tricky because the system assumes you never learned the plan when you already know it. Well, in theory, you haven't looted or learned the plan per se, it was auto-unlocked. 
and that can cause a bug in the system. As a result, Minerva's inventory might tell you that certain plans are unlearned when in reality you have built them a long time ago. So watch out about what you buy because it's easy to get deceived by the system and waste gold this way. I almost bought the ammo converter machine thinking it was some sort of skin when it's not and I have it in my camp for ages since season one. So <laughs> I almost doubted myself there since I never use it, but no, I already learned the plan. Anyway, I know it's difficult to keep track of every single item and every plan out there, but this sort of rule or bug applies only to scoreboard items right now, since paid atomic shop entries are not being sold by Minerva. So at least there aren't many items which can cause tremendous confusion. Still, when in doubt, don't simply throw your gold away. Check first, better safe than sorry. Now let's start with the new power armor issues. Recently one of you guys asked me if I knew about a fix for the new stuck power armor bug. Sometimes when you click to insert a fusion core, something goes wrong and the core disappears. As a result, players are not able to get inside that same power armor. I decided to look into it and several reports claim that the origin of the issue comes from the fix it good perk. I tried to replicate this bug, I used the perk, then I fixed a few power armor pieces and then added a fusion core to my power armor several times, but I was not lucky enough to trigger the bug. Anyhow, this recent bug can really condition your gameplay and render your power armor useless, but I think I found a potential fix through this comment, which might be the solution for you affected players. Try to drop all your fusion cores and then pick them back to try and reset the bugged fusion core stuck inside your power armor. Some people said this sort of fix solved the problem, so it's definitely worth a shot. Talking about fusion cores, this item seems to be utterly broken right now. Besides the new bug I talked about in the previous point, there are a few more concerning issues related to fusion cores. I decided to put my detective hat on after someone asked me if fusion cores are now depleting quicker or not, and the answer is yeah, they can deplete faster. I saw multiple reports on different issues, supposedly dodgy can deplete fusion cores much faster. If this is true, I don't think it's intended. Also, there are a few reports about infinite fusion cores, they just don't deplete no matter how much you sprint, jump and use your jetpack, it's real magic right there. While testing, I also discovered that fusion cores can multiplicate while entering and exiting your power armor. I started with 8 as shown in the footage. I picked up the one inside my power armor, which is a total of 9, right? But after entering and exiting the power armor again and doing the same thing, aka collecting the fusion core, I ended up with 10 in total. I tried to replicate this to see if this is a new dupe or something, but it didn't work a second time. The opposite can happen too, by entering and exiting your frame and collecting your fusion core, there is a chance that it might vanish as shown in this test. The player in question started with 5 fusion cores, and after a few ins and outs of the armor, he ended up with 3 fusion cores only. My goodness, the magic levels in 76 these days, it is impressive. To finish off, I also saw a few reports claiming their cores just vanished from their inventories. So it seems like almost anything can happen when it comes to fusion cores. I think Bethesda should rename this item to magical cores instead if they don't intend to properly fix it soon. I mean, this is ridiculous. Five new bugs with one single item? Uh, yeah, let's proceed. Well, that was a compact list of brand new issues, I think. Now, the random bug for this video is my dear Dr. Ally stuck on his own doing. He decided to use my symptomatic and never came out. I mean, he eventually despawned from there, but only when I was not around anymore. I think it's safe to say Solomon likes to heal a lot, a little bit too much actually. Anyway, that's everything I have for you for the time being. I hope I could keep you up to date with everything Fallout 76. For the latest PTS news, 
including season six rewards, feel free to check my other video here. Now consider leaving a like and subscribe if you would like to help my channel and a huge thanks to all my dear supporters. You guys rock. Now it's time for me to go. I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.